If there, if there was an equation to create, it's that. And uh, you know, I'm sorry, I, I already overstepped my, my bounds, but um, uh, the domestic legislation, as I said, it's complicated. It, it, it spans over the different regimes over time. Uh, it hasn't been formally um, consolidated. There, there is one place where it has been consolidated. I think the UN tried to do it, and it's an incomplete, if, at best, um, attempt at it. Uh, the incorporation of uh, corporate entities, uh, uh, I think it turns away many different companies that uh, want to become involved in Iraq, but they have to invest legal fees, time, and energy to wait six months down the road. All of the CPA orders and the new laws that came down, they are, they're, they're good laws, and they do a lot of, of help for Iraq, but at the end of the day, the, the ministry officials that are there that you need to deal with might not know what these laws are, and they might not... Um, they might not be receptive to a, you know, a foreign investor trying to tell them how it works. So I think you have to be cognizant. Uh, one rule that I always tell people uh, that I work with is just give as much respect as you can to the people you deal with over there because uh, you know, we are guests in their, in their, in their country. Um, and um, they've gone through a lot more than I have in the past 10 years, the past seven years. Um, and as such, if you're willing to uh, overlook some major obstacles and some major problems, there are some major growth opportunities. And um, I, think, I think everyone can agree on that. So I think that's it. And again, I'm sorry for overstepping my, my time. Um, it's just a, a brief, the themes, the practices, and the frustrations of doing business in Iraq. And I guess if you have any questions. That, well, thank you very much. That would be very insightful and enlightening look at the challenges of doing business in Iraq. And I think what, what is so clear is just how much needs to be done. I think you said, what, 700,000, how many uh, kilometers of line? 7,900 kilometers of cable. Needs to be put down for, yeah. uh, to, to build the electricity sector and how incredibly difficult it is to get anything done. I heard a lot of skepticism. If you're not a, you know, in the, the, the oil and gas sector, it sounds like, you know, to have the resources behind you to, to invest in Iraq is, is very difficult. But I'm wondering if, uh, before we open um, the floor to questions, if you could elaborate on any foreign businesses uh, outside of the oil and gas sector who are working effectively and productively and profitably in Iraq, and uh, if so, what is the secret to their success, or do they not exist? <laughs> no, I think they definitely exist, and I'm trying to think of a great example. Um, there's, a, um, there's a lending institution that I, that I know of that uh, I just met with here in D.C., and they are very productive in terms of uh, medium-sized loans that respect the size of the Iraqi market. They don't loan to uh, massive institutional size because the ability to be, to collect on those loans is suspect and the ability to be beholden to the Iraqi criminal, the, the justice system is also very high. But also uh, they don't give microfinance loans that make the cost of doing business just that much difficult. So they've found that perfect medium of mid-sized loans to, uh, that's receptive to the, the Iraqi population, but also receptive to the growth aspects of the, of the, of the countries. As I said, the GDP is uh, expected to grow 9% in 2010 and then 12% in 2010. And to the extent that there are accurate figures, you have to assume growth. Yeah. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Susie, do you have a question? Do you have a question? Oh, the size of the loans? Oh, uh, nothing more than 2 million, nothing less than 100,000. Yeah, so I mean that's uh, a medium-sized loan, because as I said with this oil and gas sector, it's not just these major corporations that are doing there. That's what we hear about. That's what we talk about. But there's literally an armada, an ar and I mean that arm an armada of smaller corporations in Jordan, Bahrain, Dubai that are waiting to come in once they're set up, and those people are going to get passed over if they talk to an institutional bank. They're going to get passed over because of their size. But then they're too big to get a normal loan from a normal bank. So. You know, it's just, I think, an understanding of the market. Uh, um, and, I, and I will say this, no matter what size you are, no matter if you're large, medium, or small, you kind of have to work with a security company. And I kind of downplay the security issue. It's all good. It's time for investing. But it's, they, are, they do offer quite a bit. And they, and they have on-the-ground business intelligence. Um, and, they, they, and you do need security when you go to different places. So it's understanding the market and then working with a security firm. For the ambassador. Uh, if you could please identify yourself. I get the impression that uh, in spite of 
uh, all the political turmoil and the uh, corruption and so forth, that there's a pretty competent uh, civil service that's carrying on. After all, they're managing all the existing uh, services such as they are, and in spite of the lack of guidance from Parliament. Uh, but they're also preparing master plans, and uh, as, you, as your outline indicated, and, uh, and, and negotiating oil contracts. Are these people, to a large extent, holdovers from the Saddam Hussein regime? And if so, uh, has deboffification been an issue um, it, within the civil service, as it, as it obviously has been in the arms, armed sure. services? It's a fantastic question. Um, uh, first off, to the, to the extent that I think there are um, competent civil servants, I think that's correct. Um, there obviously are. There are just so many of them that uh, there's bound to be some good ones out there. Um, and um, I mean, these ministries are really huge. I mean, I, I forget the number of people that work at the South Oil Company, which is a, maybe a mid-sized oil company in the U.S., but it's, I think it's from 10 to 30,000 people work there. So I mean, they're just enormous. To the extent that they've developed master plans, um, they have developed them. They've, um, they've done, had a lot of international consultants help them do that. And uh, so they've, they've produced some great work, and they've obviously contributed to that. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the amount, of, the amount of consultant work plays a huge role in that. To the extent that there's a debathification element, I would, I would take it a step further than that, and I would say there's obviously a political movements inside of these huge institutions because they're so large. And uh, there's obviously a maliki Alawi divide, it's just as there is a debathification, non-bathification divide. So yeah, the, 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 it, it is an issue. 